Okay, so this would be a feedback slash critique for low tier Allah. Oh my god, I haven't done one of these in forever. So, you've probably seen me around the Discord. I mean, you're on Paul Discord, so obviously. I go by Shazam on the Discords or something. Like, you'll see my profile pic. So, I'm gonna... It's, it's been a while since I've done one of these. I am by no means a Tekken professional, right? I am just a nerd who really enjoys Tekken, loves playing Paul because he's a lot of fun, and... You know, I'm just providing my two cents, right? Based on all my experiences of playing Paul, watching Paul, researching this character, etc., 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 yada, 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 right? Th these are my opinions as to here's what I think you could be doing better, here's where you really need to work on some improvement, etc., right? It is by no means gospel, and it is by no means like a surefire method of hey, if you do this, you will immediately see, you know, success. A lot of it's going to be food for thought, but I do do genuinely believe that, hey, if you follow this, you just kind of work on it, chip away at it, you'll be able to see improvements, right? So the only request is really just like, take what I say into consideration with a grain of salt, but do take it into consideration because it ultimately it's just, I'm just trying to help you out here. Now, with that out of the way, right, the level you're at, I'm assuming with, you know, the mentor rank and the marauder, and you're fighting a lot of, like, marauders and third dance and stuff like that, you're at that beginner, low in entry, whatever, however you want to describe it, you're at that early stages, yeah, let's go with early stages of Tekken, right, you're facing a lot of players who press a lot of buttons, are very aggressive, and just naturally they just throw out a lot of stuff right defensive knowledge isn't going to be a thing so you'll get away with more gimmicks than you would against more experienced players that is not to say what you are playing isn't real tekken right i know a lot of people throw that term out or that term around you're, you're still playing the game right but you're playing a different version than you would against more experienced players or when you yourself have more experience and I wasn't really cognizant of this early on, so I try to be more mindful of that now. And this is just a long-winded way of me saying, there's some advice I'm going to give you that's only going to be... It's going to be more effective at the level you're at, right? That it, it, you know, just, just block and learn punishment will be super effective where you're currently at. Right? And then there's some advice I'm going to give you for the future, when you're more experienced fighting stronger opponents, and it's more just kind of like, hey, here are some bad habits I think you should try to avoid. All right. So, with that being said, let's get into it. Mm -hmm. uh, sure, let's go to a round start. So, Right here, right, just throughout all of your matches, there's a lot of aggression from both you and the opponent. And I'm, this is going to be tailored towards more long-term Paul playing, right? Paul is just not that kind of character, right? You, if, if you go against a Jin, if you go against a Haorang or a King, and both of you are at range zero pressing every button at your disposal, more often than not, unless your timing is godlike, right? Unless you just have the reads on all of their timings, Paul's going to lose. His frames are typically slower on some of his power moves. His He has a long wind-ups, right? Like, accessing stuff, like core circle back, right? Core circle back four is one of Paul's best moves, and it's a godlike move. But when you're at range zero, winding him core circle forward back, and then this Jin just presses, you know, can-cans or something, who's really going to win out, right? Or if he presses four, right? His magic four, the homing counter hit launcher or if he presses forward four really long range mid kick right all of these things are to say that like you really want unless you unless you have the read on your opponent you really just want to kind of tighten up your gameplay play very compact and abuse paul's strengths which are his safety his his all of his counter hitting tools that are all safe and his ability to kind of 
with a well, you know, it's, it's really just about that safety and counter hit tools, right? With a well-timed course, will go forward three, course will go back four, etc. You'll net easy damage. But the thing about that is that it's all about timing, right? And so that's why you don't want to be pressing too many buttons as much as you are. You don't want to be jabbing constantly in their face. You want to first identify the opponent you're facing. Are they aggressive? Then you don't need to be pressing all these buttons. You just need to hang back and just block. Paul has some of the best punishment in the game, right? Yeah, his 10 frame is lackluster, but his 12 frame is still one of the best in the game. His while standing 13 frame is still one of the best in the game, barring like the 13 frame launchers, sure, right? His standing punishment, all really solid, right? You have a 14 frame launcher, you have down forward two, you have hop kick, etc. With punishment, all of your tools, while maybe not the upper, like the absolute best in their class, right? And a lot of people do this where they're like, oh, it's it's not a 13 frame launcher, so it's not that good. I'm like, y'all are missing the forest for the trees, bro. Yes, I'm not saying Paul is the best pound for pound punish character. However, he has very strong punishment at every critical frame you want it at, right? The opponent, especially early, early on, especially, right? The opponent throwing out a bunch of moves that leave them at minus 12 is very common, right? And or doing a low that leaves them at minus 13 because they don't know any better. Very common. And you have minimum like 30 damage punishes, right? With back one two and wall standing three two. These rack up easy damage. More importantly, not only do they rack up damage, once your opponent sees that they're consistently being punished, right? It'll make them falter on their offense. It'll make them second guess themselves, giving you an opportunity to breathe and giving you an opportunity to then lay on your offense, right? Or if they don't do that, right, if they just keep pressing buttons, if they just keep pressing that punishable move and they're not learning from their mistakes, you just block and keep pressing back one, two, while saying three, two, jabs, whatever punishment you need, right, and then kill them. That's it. So let's, 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 look, at a, let's look at a specific situation here. So at this stage, right, <clears throat> If the Claudio, or I keep thinking Claudio, if the Jin wanted to, he can press forward four, right, and then hit you for that whiff, or forward four, Zen transition, all of a sudden he's in your face. And as much as I like Paul, I don't think Paul is going to be consistently beating Jin at range zero, meaning when you're right in front of each other's faces. Yeah, Paul has Devil Man for Jin's parry and stuff like that, but it's like you're, you're taking on a lot of risk for not a lot of reward, right? So. Instead, like right here, right? You block something. I think that move is safe. Double check on that. But you immediately go for a big call out move with course will go back one plus two. Why? Right? What? It's 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 an evasive launcher, sure, right? But if if the Jin just blocks it, right? Or, heaven forbid, he parries. He gets a big punish, right? Jin's no slouch on the 14 frame punish side. You're taking... Th this is this is going to be... This is, again, more long term, right? We'll talk about what are some immediate improvements you can make later. <clears throat> In the long term, you want to be focusing on how to play a safe Paul with minimal risk to yourself. Because you don't have to. That's the beauty of it. Yes, Paul has some high risk, high reward moves. But the beauty of it is that you never have to use them, right? Instead, you let your opponent take on as much risk as they can. Because you don't care, right? At any point, you can get a good counter hit, you can get rage for a strong comeback factor, all this stuff, all of these elements line up in your favor more so than they do the opponent, right? Granted, it does get harder as you, as you, you know, face stronger opponents, right? Your counter hit launches aren't going to come up as often. You're not going to be able to whiff punish as often because these people aren't just aren't whiffing or pressing into things as much. But it's important to build the foundation now so you're not just trying to play catch up later on, right? I don't want to harp on that point too much, but just basically try to play a more compact game. And we'll talk about what that means later. But food for thought, right? Think about how you can make, you know, I'm sure you've heard the terminology of turns in Tekken, right? When an opponent does an a safe move that ends their turn, right? Now it's your turn to apply offense. 
what is the most amount of reward you can get for the least amount of risk and just constantly abusing that fact, right? Now, there's going to be opportunities for, you know, go for a high risk, high reward move because the reward would, you know, either huge momentum in your favor or just outright kill the opponent. Those opportunities will happen, yes. But the goal should be first develop that foundation of how do I maximize my tools with the least amount of risk to myself, right? And then as you get comfortable in that play space, as you get comfortable in that kind of like, all right, I am comfortable maximizing my, my risk reward here, then you can you know look for opportunities of like, okay, when can I take a bit more risk for a bit more reward, right? Because you can afford to. Think of it like this. If you're constantly pressing punishable, high risk, high reward buttons, every time you get punished, that gives you less opportunity because the next time you, you try to go for this high risk, high reward, you might not survive because the opponent's punish will just outright kill you. Or if it doesn't kill you, it knocks you down, which leads to the opponent's OK, and you're just pl you're playing and you're playing catch up on an uphill battle. Yes, Paul has rage and everybody hypes up his his rage cancel, rage art cancel and stuff like that. But you don't want to be relying on it, right? Paul isn't amazing because he just has the rage art cancel and at any point just wins the game. He's amazing because the opponent has to fight tooth and nail for every bit of damage they can get while minimizing risk because Paul's punishment is pretty good, right? And after they're dealing with safe down forward two, after they're dealing with core circle back four, core circle back two, core circle forward three, right? All of these tools, just when they think they can like close out the game, then boom, Paul has rage, and because of your because of your patience, because of your chip damage and punishment, the opponent is still is now suddenly it's all in Paul's favor. Right? Think about it like this. If you're playing a game where you just kind of throw out all the buttons you want, all of a sudden you're in rage. And you're like, all right, cool, let me make my comeback. But the opponent is at full health or 80% health because you haven't you haven't optimized your chipping, your chip damage or your throw game or whatever, right? What's, what's, what, what do you think is going to happen? The damage scaling in season th post season three with the wall damage changes, all this other stuff, Paul just doesn't outright kill people as much as he used to, right? However, if you instead, you know, try to get a bit of chip damage here and there with back four, sidestep three, core circle forward three, et cetera, et cetera. Your opponent's life from 80% goes to around 60, and then all you need is a combo and a mix up, and then you're like, okay, I can, I can do something here, right? So that should be the goal is, I know I have this tool at my disposal. You have this inevitability in your game plan. And so you wanna focus on, all right, let me just abuse this strength to the best of my ability and make my opponent work for all their damage and then finally just when they think they have the game i hit rage and now they're panicking and then i get a good counter hit into rage arc cancel combo and that should seal the round right that should be the focus but again first you got to build that foundation of how do you safely get in all you know start racking up damage with chip damage here and there right without putting yourself at all this risk. Like right here, look at all these situations where... Oh. That's right, Twitch is 10 second rewind. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Okay, so right here, Cla uh, I keep thinking Claudio because the outfit. Jin does down back four, or full crouch down back four. I don't know if he has... Yeah, he has a, he has a weird down four, but it's still really good. This leaves them at minus two. <clears throat> right. You're now plus two, which isn't a lot, but you have the advantage, which means your moves should be beating. Your moves should be beating out what the Jin does. But instead, what ends up happening is he's doing wall standing four, which two frames of lag, so it's like coming out in 13 frames. So you're pressing something that's slow, that's slower than 13 frames, or yeah, slower than 13 frames, which goes back into... Paul doesn't really have, you know, a strong lockdown mid at 13 frames by design, right? You just kind of accept it and you have to go, okay, what can I do that puts pressure on the opponent when you don't have like these fast lockdown mids you might, so other characters have. <clears throat> but instead you're pressing, you, you, you're pressing and trying to challenge your opponent when you need to first, first just kind of take a step back and just block. 
he's able to get while standing forward, leaving him with around plus five. You keep pressing buttons, and now you just got counter hit. You, you see what I'm saying, right? It's that if you have good knowledge of the opponent, if you have good reads, yes, Paul can be this offensive monster. But most of the time, you just got to be passive. You got to block and then just keep chipping away at your opponent and utilize your inevitability to kind of to, to really control the pace of the game. You can't control the pace of the game if you just keep pressing into your opponent's counter hits, right? So now he gets a combo, you're at the wall. Unfortunate realization, like, you, you could have gotten a good whiff punish, but it was a little too late, and now you're just dead. But, right, that situation in particular isn't that big of an issue, right? That shit happens, right, where you just kind of miss a whiff punish. But missing the whiff punish wouldn't hurt as bad if you instead, from the get-go, played a little bit more compact, pressed less buttons into the, your opponent's counter hit tools or just or just all their pokes, right? So you're not racking up all this chip damage. Wall standing fours by themselves are typically like 18 to 20 damage. Uh, 15 to 20 damage, right? The, these, these are not like high damage moves. But if you eat a down back forward, that's seven damage. You eat a wall standing four, that's you know twenty damage. So now you're looking at twenty five to thirty. Then you eat a counter hit launch from the Jin, which, while it's an instant screw, which doesn't usually lead to a lot of damage, now it's like forty damage. And all of a sudden, in a short interaction, you're down sixty points of health for little to no reason, right? Whereas if you just blocked, yeah, you still take some chip damage here and there, but you don't eat sixty points of damage for no reason, right? It's it's all about it, do I re and when you're challenging your opponent, right? What would the reward be, right? Are you really gonna counter hit launch them with some of your counter hit tools that come out in like 20 frames, right? Is that really going to happen? And how often does that happen? Versus, I just wait a little bit and then, okay, I got a punish opportunity or I'm able to reset to neutral and then the the gin has to work back into it, right? Stuff like that. <clears throat> Um, I've said what I want to a lot about this Jin, so I think I'm just gonna look at the king for a second, and... Um, are these supposed to be Corsica forward threes? <coughs> After after this, like are these this this instant wall standing three you're doing? Is that supposed to be core circle forward three? Wall standing three is a decent move. Uh, I'm gonna be real with you before anyone tells you otherwise. You cannot hit confirm this move. That's a tangent for another day. It's a it's still it's a safe mid that has a string to it that you can kind of twitch confirm right. You're pretty lenient in the window. And you can, it, it leads to a knockdown for decent damage, like 40 damage knockdown, right? That's pretty good. But here's the thing. If your opponent has no reason to duck, why would you, they're not gonna, they're not gonna eat this mid, right? And it's now what you're doing is instead of like a 40 damage knockdown, all you're doing is doing a minus nine mid, killing your turn, meaning when you know again thinking go think about frames right when you're minus nine you can't move you can't sidestep you can only block right you're not like alisa or zafina who can maybe cheat out a, a sidestep here and there you're playing paul who's got an average movement average backdash average sidestep right and now you're at minus nine against your opponent yes you're safe but you have to take any mix-up they throw out right and then think about the mix-up from wall standing three two right there is no mix-up the opponent just ducks right at any, the opponent can consistently duck, and all you're doing is leaving yourself a minus nine in their face. And at any point, if you try to go for the, the follow up, right, the two part, the high. If the opponent presses into it, yeah, sure, it's a counter hit launcher. But if the opponent just ducks, right, all of a sudden you're eating, eighty damage because they just hop kicked because you whiffed a high. Right, that's the, that's the thing you got to be mindful of. It's just like you don't want to be autopiloting these moves, right? Wall standing three two should not be a should not be a mix up tool at any point in your game. If it's something that you want to use to throw off your opponent because you've conditioned them to expect course will go forward three, then sure, right? 
but using it as a primary method of poking at your opponent is is more often than not going to spell disaster for you. It's just not something you want to be doing. <clears throat> uh, I've, if, oh, it's actually getting hot. So I've talked a lot about you know my philosophies and optimal game, not going into like specifics. So let's 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 go into the king. Talk about specifics about what I think that you can be doing, and then we'll we'll go from there. I think it was yeah this guy. <clears throat> Oh yeah. Uh, let's just... <laughs> uh, Is he the guy? Nice. Way to go, dude. Alright, All right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> we're going to talk about this real quick, and then I'll, I'll go into my spiel about what are some immediate improvements to your game that you can make, and what are some more long-term stuff. Right. This move, alley kicks from king, is a gimmick, right? He, he hit you like four times. After the first hit, right, you can block or low parry the rest, right? Practice it in training mode. Set the king to just repeatedly do alley kicks, and if they do more than one, if they do low, low, right, you block the first low, or even if you eat it, you block the second one, and then you just hop kick or low parry, right? Now, at any point, he can do a mid, right? He can do the low and the mid punch, which is it is a mix-up right sometimes you'll be ducking into it but again that mid is launch punishable right so that you have opportunities to look at how much damage he's really doing right so oh this ah uh, it just winds too far back Whoa. <sighs> Excuse me. so this low kick does like five damage wait is it uh, it does like 10 it does like seven i don't know it does a bit of chip damage, but at any point you can block and then launch him for it, right? Or if he does the mid, you can block and launch that. So he's maybe trying to chip in for a bunch of damage and risking 80 damage crackback. Now, why would this king do that? Why would this king use this move if it's so risky, right? It's because you don't know how to handle it. And he knows this, and he's just abusing that. And he likely hasn't faced anybody that can handle that move properly, and that's why he can, he just keeps doing it. This is going to go into a fundamental lesson for this early level, early stages of Tekken, right? Especially with Paul. Punishment knowledge can go a really long way, right? Simply blocking your opponent understanding that they're going to go for this mix-up or they're going to go for this thing that is easily countered by simply blocking and punishing and then waiting a little bit and then when they try to go for it again because they're not used to you know someone just understanding what's going on you you can you know throw in a core circle back four throw in a core circle forward three etc 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 right changes everything right the king, the, if this is his primary way of like getting in chip damage and you know and messing with you, right? If you take that away from him, he's just gonna fall apart, and that's going to be a central theme to any sort of early level Tekken that you're running into right now. The opponent's throwing out a lot of these moves, and a lot of it is punishable, right? And and this is where we go into <laughs> the the string cheese that is Tekken, right? It's scary. It, it, there's a lot of there's like 10,000 moves in this game 50 characters each with a hundred moves and especially King who's got like 200 moves a lot of them throws it can be scary, right? But if you just start chipping away at some of the cheese, right? If you ch start chipping away at some of the the common gimmicks that you're seeing, right? Like the King constantly doing alley kicks or the King from range 3 running at you going for shining wizard, right? 
a simple being familiar with that situation and then knowing the answer to that situation in the case of alley kicks low parrying all the follow-up low kicks or just if you know they're going to go for the mid stand blocking and launching them to make sure they get the message that they can't just fucking throw out that button right or in the case of you know the king runs from range three and goes for shining wizard just ducking and then launching them when they go for the throw right because they're on autopilot gives you so much reward and momentum it's insane right simple punishment goes a long way at these early stages and it can be scary to be under pressure i get that right but here's the thing a lot of these early level kings a lot of these early level jins or whatever they all do the same stuff right they all do the same tactics i'm gonna use my throw here i'm gonna do alley kicks here because they haven't really been challenged by it. It just works on their friends or it works on the random people they meet online and they don't have any incentive to try and improve or change that. Basically, once you're able to handle a situation at this early level, anytime you run into a different king, you'll be prepared, right? You'll have a better understanding. Yes, the, the new king you face might have some new level set up or some extra cheese that you're not used to yet, but you can take out a common factor across most of the, of the beginning level kings you're fighting. Same thing with the Jinns, same thing with the Pauls, right? A lot of Pauls will do like 3-2 as a mix-up, and it's not a mix-up, and they should die for it every time. This includes me, right? I've, I've definitely autopiloted that string a lot and then gotten blown the fuck up for it. And that should, that should be what, that is what should be happening, right? So... Slowing down your gameplay, blocking, and then understanding what to punish is really what's going to help you unlock Paul. Because the situation will go, you just block, the opponent tries to throw out something, It's pun you know it's punishable, you do the punish, they're behind 30 damage now, and all of a sudden they're just like, they, at first, the first few times, they'll just be like, oh, okay, well, whatever, I'm just going to do my thing again, hopefully. They will take some time to adjust, but by the time they actually adjust, it'll usually be the round sealed up in your favor, right? A lot of a lot of the early level Tekken is just going to be coming down to timing, right? Knowing when they're going to just run in at you and when you should just press down forward two, press core circle forward three, press jabs, jabs are always really powerful, stuff like that, and being able to punish them accordingly, right? That that can change a lot. Now, <clears throat> mm, that's going to be difficult, and it's going to take a lot of time to develop, right? And that's, that's just the tough, that's just... This is where Tekken comes in, right? It, it, it's like, yeah, the punishment can seem scary at first, but it will be very easy. I don't, I don't know how to say this. It, it'll be difficult, but the rewards are worth it because you can consistently see free damage on the board and easy improvements by just knowing a little bit of punishment and then being able to use that to get momentum, right? Other things that would work at this early stage is you got to stop pressing all these buttons, right? Yes, you want to press some buttons. It's not like you don't want to, you just want to, you don't want to be like this iron wall because if you have the defensive knowledge, then yes, just be this iron wall of defense and then you're good to go. But if you don't, it can be very passive and you just let the opponent keep pressing buttons on you and it can be frustrating. I get that. However, you, you need to rein in the buttons you're pressing, right? You can't keep doing wall standing three as like this primary mid. You can't keep pressing course will go back one plus two if you feel under pressure because of this high risk, high reward stuff. More often than not, mashing buttons is going to get you eaten alive against a lot of these players because you're both mashing buttons at range zero, right? But let's say the king jabs you and then throws you, right? Because you're mashing buttons, you're not going to be ready for the throw break and then he gets a free damage into Oki because it's king and all this other stuff. Whereas with Paul, let's say the mashing works out in your favor. Rarely is it going to really net those consistent counter hit launches that you'll see, right? If you keep doing this, more often than not, your opponents are gonna end up on the, f either A, they're just gonna be faster than you, right? 
or B, the few times that you do win by mashing, mashing stuff out, your rewards aren't going to match theirs. Paul is not a king where he can just mash out like forward, forward, neutral two or one plus two or whatever, you know, the shove or, or down back three for the big counter hit launch or throws. He's not whoring where he can just keep pressing a lot of kicks and overwhelm the opponent because they don't know how to handle themselves under pressure and stuff like that, right? It, <clears throat> it's really going to be, uh, it's going to be a slow, patient poke and punish game right he's just not really a rushdown character you you can't play him as a rushdown character without the requisite knowledge of like timing and then knowing having a good read on your opponent because more often than not you're just going to get blown up for it right uh, i've rambled a lot on this point so let's let's talk about let's talk about other stuff that you can improve on Neutral, punishment slash matchup knowledge, combos slash okey, personal opinion stuff. Neutral. I've already talked about it, but it's really just about you got to do start doing a bit more jabs. Try to try to rein it in. Try to find the timing of like, okay, my opponent's going to run in at me. I'm going to do down forward two or just do jabs to disrupt them, right? Or you, you're like, okay, they're just going to run in. I'm just going to do course of go forward three and then disrupt them. Right, stuff like that. Knowing when to start timing those. It's a skill you want to develop now. And how do you develop all of this? It's just trial and error, right? With you know, someone could be there telling you, like, hey, at this point in the match you want to do course circle four three, at this point you want to do that, at this point you want to do that. But it, a lot of it is gonna come down to you as as a player have to just start getting familiar with like, okay, this king's running at me, he's probably gonna do a uh, shining wizard right so if i can time it right i either just duck or do core circle four or three stuff like that or let's say you're facing the djinn and it's like okay well i'm at like range four the djinn's running at me let me do core circle four or three and get him to stop right stuff like that and you go it, it creates a situation of okay hypothesis i believe i can do this at this time i can do a at this time test it out do a at this time right press your jab press your button or whatever and it doesn't work out right which leads into okay it didn't work out let me test it a few more times right which leads into okay it's not working out i need to change up my game plan and use option b or option c or option d or okay it's working out and i have a better sense of the timing right a lot of it is just trial and error finding out what your opponent is weak to and then utilizing that to your advantage and that's really just going to be a lot of paul's neutral maintaining safe compact play and poking it's a bit more long term but we'll go into that combo uh punishment slash matchup knowledge i talked about it and then this is really going to be up to you right you have to make the decision of when you just go okay this character is gonna is really bothering me i don't want to lose to their regular cheese anymore let me start lapping it out let me start practicing what i can do against their move in this situation and you just start chipping it away one at a time right that's how i did it and that's how i like to learn because that's what helps me ingrain it how you learn is up to you sometimes these these like what's the word like this method might not work out for you. So you have to find some way to just start building up that knowledge of just kind of like, all right, I have a better idea of what I'm doing. And sometimes that'll be the trial and error method I outline. Sometimes it's just running, it's just grinding out these matches and just being like, okay, I've, I've seen that move enough. I know what to do now, right? However you want to do it. But you yourself have to make the decision of just kind of like, all right, start chipping away, king. What's the common strats I'm seeing online? They go for throws, practice ducking and lo consistently launching, right? When they whiff, consistently whiff punishing them. Or if they go for alley kicks a lot, consistently figuring out, all right, block, low parry, block, stand block, launch the mid, right? It's just, just practicing those situations so that when they come up, you have a good consistent punishment for them. Uh... 
combo slash Oki. There's a lot of combo stuff that you're just dropping here and there. Try to try to first optimize your combos. Like you got a big launch off course to go back one plus two against the Jin, but you didn't really capitalize on it. There's not really much else to say here. It's just practice. You don't need to do the crazy hard stuff at the start. It's Paul. Just do the basic stuff. Consist. Focus on consistency. And then, you know, if you want to go for the hard stuff, go for it. Uh, personal opinion stuff. All right, so this is where I'm going to talk about what long-term, what success you want to be doing in the future. So let's let's go over this, right? Paul, three, two... Paul, Corsica four three, Paul, one, Paul, four two, Paul, Corsica four, Paul, um, okay. the wow, minus, minus. Hurt. Minus 20, you know, Jesus Christ. Oh, I gotta stop whiffing these buttons. Okay. So, when you're playing Paul, how do you deal chip damage? And the answer is this move, right? This move is OP. This move is just straight up OP. Right? Lows in this game typically leave you at minus, right? So you're not able to really continue your offense, but the low is relatively safe, like you're not going to get launched for it. Or the low leaves you heavily plus, but it's it carries a lot of risk, right? It's usually very minus. There are exceptions, right? Everybody knows about Kazuya down back four. Everybody knows about Ganryu down four or three. Those characters are very annoying, in my opinion, and they have, but they usually have weaknesses to make up for it. Like, yeah, Kazuya has down back four, and it's really a fucked up part of his Oki, etc., etc., etc. But it's it's like he doesn't have a lot of panic tools. He doesn't really have a lot of good pokes. He's got down back four, and that's about it. Right, uh, maybe some other stuff. Like, yeah, he has the Mishima jabs, but Mishima jabs are kind of whack. It's really the one one two, but if they're not good at hit confirming it, if they just press it, you're just kind of ass. It's whatever. Or Ganryu, yeah, Ganryu is scary up close, just like everything else he has. But once you get to that range game and you're able to keep him out, he's just kind of meh. Right. But Paul, this core circle forward three leaves you neutral. Right. It leaves you neutral. On hit, it's minus 14, which means most characters aren't going to launch it. And it has a strong counter hit property leading to a guaranteed demo man. Right. So basically, this button reads, hey, get 17 and, and other other additions. It's that it's got really good range, right? Really long range, high crushes, tracks insanely well, right? For a move that's not homing, it, it's very close to it, right? So at any point in the game, you go, hmm, I want 20 po uh, 17 points of free damage. And then you press that button. And that's it. And it, by God forbid, if the opponent presses another button in some point during this, right? You get 40 points of free damage, essentially. Uh, 40 to 50. I can't. I forget what Core Circle Forward 3 counter hit into Demo Man is. Figuring out how to time this move and how to utilize it is very critical to Paul, right? It's one of your easiest ways to get chip damage, but it can be a double-edged sword because it, it can be very predictable. If you're very predictable in your timing, the opponent just gets used to it, and then all of a sudden, you're getting blocked or low-parried, right? Then it goes into the next layer of mixing it up with Core Circle 4 4 or Core Circle 4 3 plus 4. This this should be your critical way of getting in a lot of easy chip damage, right? Nobody blocks low online until later levels, and it's very easy to just kind of keep chipping this at the opponent. They start getting frustrated, and then they start either trying to low parry standing in front of you, or they just start ducking, and then all of your mids are online, right? Then you can start death fisting them, all right? This is a very powerful tool that you have to be creative with it, right? Like, obviously, it's not as easy as pressing 
down back four with Kazuya or having Hell Sweep or something like that. But it's something that you really want to start utilizing effectively as you get more familiar with using that tool. The power will be, it'll just be very powerful. It might not seem like much at first, but as you get familiar with it and as you get better at just kind of timing it and then just pressuring your opponent and just repeatedly abusing that against them, I'm, I'm a firm believer that this is like one of the best lows in the game, right? Now, other options is throwing them, right? So doing something like, do they have a gif? Oh, nice, yeah. So throwing them, right? Doing doing course or doing down forward one plus two stuff like this. Paul has a complete throw game, right? He has a one break with back one plus four. He has a two break with two plus four back, and he has multiple one plus two breaks, right? Like twist and shout, and all, all that type of stuff. And if you know if you're consistent with it, he has down forward one plus three into you know death fist, right? That 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 throw. All of these are very fast, hard to deal with, and especially good against players. Like, how often did you see this guy ever duck, right? Like, doing back one, two, he, he didn't duck the second hit, he just goes for throws. They don't understand that, like, oh, I have to duck sometimes against Paul, right? Now, they don't want to because they'll duck once, eat death fist, and then they're like, I never want to do this again. That should be your goal. Anyway. Right, so, against against opponents using this using throws when they get really up in your face but they leave themselves unsafe or too slow because these moves are typically fast they're like 12 they're like i12 yeah usually command usually command grabs are like i12 there are some exceptions like paul's back one plus four is 11 frames which is really powerful but basically it makes your opponent second guess like oh okay i'm up close time to start putting on pressure oh i just got thrown right I just got thrown in, and it's like, well, shit. Now I have to restart this all over again by running in at Paul, hoping to get in, and then hoping to like apply something before I get thrown again, or I get demo manned, etc., etc., etc. So stuff like that, that should be your way of getting in some chip damage. It's like, yeah, he doesn't have a throw that breaks the rules like Giant Swing from, from the Kings, right? And he doesn't have tackle like Marduk has but it's still a tool to utilize because you want to be constantly pressuring your opponent to be on the lookout for these things, right? Because really what happens at these early stages, what's going to happen is you start throwing somebody, they start getting pissed off because they're like, how dare this person throw me? And then they'll run at you and try to throw you. And then you go, you're, you're running at me. You're going to throw me. I'm going to duck. You're going to throw whiff and I'm going to launch you, right? That type of stuff. Uh, that's typically what happens. I'm, I'm going on a tangent, but yeah, stuff like this. Use your lows, use your throws, get in that chip damage, and as your opponent slowly starts losing all their health here and there, little by little, they start either panicking or freaking out or getting frustrated, and they start throwing out riskier buttons to try and catch up, and at that point, you can focus more on the punishment side of things. There is that ebb and flow, right? If the opponent is pressing a lot of buttons at you, you need to figure out what buttons they're pressing and how to counteract this, right? You don't want to just die to this easily. If the opponent isn't throwing a lot of buttons, you go, of course, will go forward three, you go for throws, or you keep moving forward with dash blocking and pushing them to the wall. And at that point, you start doing all your wall spots and stuff like that and start pressuring them that way, right? So that type of stuff other options that i think are really good is like down one but we'll talk about that later oh god i've rambled for so long All right and and again the goal isn't to just start doing start throwing your opponent left and right like start doing three throws in a row or something like that the goal is to look for opportunities let's see let's see if it comes up in this next round so like right here right right here the king does his shoulder. It's kind of spaced out, so I think it's safe at this point. It's active for a very long time. If you blocked it up close, you can punish it. But if you block it, if you block it from farther out, he's still he's safe. If not, he's like plus. So that can be kind of risky. But like at any point, you can just throw him, right? And again, the shoulder is an arm power crush. So if you're throwing him when the power crush becomes active, he can't break anything. So you just get free 40 damage, right? So right here. The king's safe, he's in front of your face, he's gonna be like, all right, time to press my jabs or something or do alley kicks, and then you just throw him before he can start doing that. 
stuff like that to make them second guess it. Similarly, similarly, like Demo Man carries that sort of same opportunity of like, okay, they're right up in my face. They're not going to move yet. I can do Demo Man to get free damage. The risk is obviously, yes, you can get launched for both throws and for Demo Man. And throws aren't guaranteed, right? Like the damage from Demo Man is guaranteed. The problem with Demo Man, as we'll get into it later, is just kind of like the clean hit is just trash, right? It's just straight up trash. And you need to be aware of that. This is not a call to like buff Demo Man's clean hit, right? It's more so you as a player need to understand that you shouldn't be relying on this high risk, medium reward low, right? Think about, okay, so think about what happens when you whiff a throw versus Demo Man gets blocked. What do you think is going to get more free damage from the opponent? right? The stagger block or the very fast whiff animation from the throw. If the opponent isn't expecting it, you can get away with more throws. Yes, they can break it, but at these early stages, they're not going to. Versus a demo man, they block it, and it's just kind of like, oh, right? And think about it like this. If you start, if you start relying on demo man as your primary low against opponents at this stage, you're, you're going to be building bad habits in the future about, oh, all right, I'm not sure what to do. Let me do Demo Man to try and get in some chip damage. And then a stronger opponent will either read that and then backdash to mess up the clean hit and just block the rest. Or they do a hard call out, block it, and then launch you for like 80 damage, right? That's the thing. It's just kind of like, okay, what would you rather risk, right? A chance, it's like that risk reward coming back into play. Anyway, long story short, don't always rely on Demo Man, especially as you face stronger opponents. You you really want the wall to back you up when you're using Demo Man, or you just focus more on other ways to get in some chip damage. Oh, whoops. <laughs> there's, there's a lot to talk about here. Um... I feel like I rambled on for a lot and I don't want to like lose you and just kind of me droning on and on about like, hey, here's my philosophy and all this other shit. Uh, I'm going to stop it here and I'll do a follow up. But let me let me ask you this is kind of like, did any of this make any sense to you? Were there any concept you didn't quite understand or was there anything that you're just kind of like, yeah, none of this really made sense to me, right? If so, like, what questions do you have? Hopefully I'll try and answer them at some point. Like, what would you, what are some things that you want to focus on? What are some more specific areas of improvement that you want me to focus on and be like, hey, here's what you need to do to be improving here. That type of stuff, right? If any of that comes to mind, let me know so I can, I can create like a more focused response and feedback because here I was just kind of like, eh, I'm, I'm just going to say what's on my mind, right? And at that point, let me know. Yeah. If any of this helped, you know, I'm happy. If you got something out of this, I'm more than happy. Right. If, if not, please let me know like, Hey, here are some areas I'm still confused on. What do you mean by this? What do you mean by that? Or here is here, here's my, here's my blah, blah, blah. Like what, any questions you have, right? The last thing I'll say is that you just want to start focusing on goal setting and then developing that's a, that's a skill set outside of Tekken that people should just develop anyway, but this is something very important to Tekken, especially for people who are new on their journey. It's that too often people get lost in like, oh, I just need to focus on winning and ranking up as a, me as a measure of skill. It's like, yeah, in the short term that can happen because there's a lot of easy ways to just rank up. But in the long term, you're literally defeating yourself, right? By focusing on these short-term gains, right, just like with anything else, you're building a shaky foundation where it's very easy for you to just kind of fall apart as as the as you face stronger opponents, right? If you just focus on, all right, let me just do this cheesy setup that's worked on everybody. Let me do three, two, back four, or let me do down forward, one, back four constantly without any sort of changes to it. You know, you're gonna be, you're gonna be, what's the word? You're gonna, you're gonna hit a wall faster right versus if you focus on okay i let me set up a goal of 
I want to consistently punish King's alley kicks. And then you start practicing that, start practicing in the lab, start testing out in real matches against any Kings online or a friend who plays King and be like, okay, I am now consistently punishing alley kick. What is the next thing I want to work on? Maybe it's a combo. Maybe it's another punishment from punishment situation you need to be aware of from King, or maybe it's a punishment situation you need to be aware of for another character. And as you slowly build up that knowledge and repertoire, you can you'll 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 start to see gradual improvement that lasts versus I got this set up, it's working out. I'm just going to use this. Oh, I'm hitting a brick wall. I'm hitting a wall later, right? So it's again, the goal should be what is some long-term improvement you should focus on? And how do you get to that point where all these other players are at where they're like, "Oh man, I'm you know, I'm just schmoving around the around it, doing all these whiff punishes, getting all these crazy counter hit launches." everybody started where you're at now right that's the thing that's the fucked up thing about tekken is that there's a shitload of legacy knowledge in this game and so it can seem like there's this you just have these years of improvement to catch up and that's because you do right a lot of these players they've been playing for 10 plus years right obviously if you're someone who's newer or if you're someone who you've been playing for a long time but you haven't really put in the focus to to just kind of really refine that knowledge, right? If you've just been you know, playing casually for a long time, you're not gonna see the same level of results of people who really focused on playing this at a competitive level, right? It doesn't even have to be professional, right? Maybe it's just their hobby, but they're able to you know, just research, develop that skill set, and they play it really well at a, at a strong competitive level, like they're at that intermediate to higher level. So even if they're not professional, they're still really strong. Like this is what you're competing with, and understand that everybody started at the same place that you are where it's they just build up that knowledge over time and that's that's the neat thing about tekken is that like most most of the time obviously exceptions happen because bamco's fucking insane sometimes legacy knowledge carries over right the work you put in now will will carry over into tekken 8 right most likely paul's going to be in tekken 8 so whatever knowledge you have with paul now will carry over into the future you'll be able to you know understand that like hey i did this paul combo in tekken 7 it, or i know this paul punish from or poking style from tekken 7 still works out in tekken 8 right or you maybe you have to do some adjustments for whatever new combo system they implement but it's like for the most part your legacy knowledge will hold so doing the work now saves you a lot of headaches and time in the future Anyway, I hope I hope I hope this made sense. If you have any questions, feel free to let us know in the Discord. Everybody's usually pretty chill and helpful. You know, they're always very active. Uh, if you have any questions, let us know. All right, stay safe.